Alright, so now we're going to work some of the example problems out of the textbook. The way I'm going to show you to work them is not the same way they're necessarily worked in the book. It may be, but the method I'm going to show you is consistent and can be used time after time. Okay, so the first thing the book asks us is it wants to know f of x, the f x component of a force, and the resultant that would be here, okay? So it tells us that y component is 4,000 pounds and you see that is in a positive y direction and you see that this x component is also in a positive direction. All right, now if this angle is 40, what do we know about this angle, all right? we know that it is going to be 50 degrees. Well, I don't see the symbol for 50, for degrees. So that is 50 degrees, all right? So if we want to know the fx here, which is the adjacent to the 50 degrees, right? We know the opposite because the opposite is 4,000. So we can do equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that is, the opposite is 4,000 pounds. Now we need to cross multiply and divide, so we get fx times the tangent of 50 is equal to 4,000. pounds. To get fx by itself, I need to divide both sides by tangent of 50. So it cancels on this side, and now I punch that into my calculator and get three thousand three hundred fifty. Okay, so that's fx. I know fx and fy, so I can find r, and it is going to be very simply. So I get R is equal to the square root of 
I punch those numbers in. Take the square root. And we find that R is equal to 5,221 pounds. Okay? So let's look at the next problem. Okay, so looking at this problem, this example, uh, it gives us a force P and we are to break it down into the X and Y components. Now if we look at this, we see that our Y is positive and our X is in the negative direction. So we don't want to be sloppy and lose that, okay? So remember we said that the X component was going to be the force times cosine of the angle theta. All right, so that means that it's going to be equal to P times cosine of 50 degrees and P was actually 400 pounds so let's substitute that in And now when I punch it into my calculator, I get 400. Oops, it's cosine 40 there, guys. All right, so I get that PX is 306 pounds. All right, let's get that fixed to 40. All right, and don't forget that we said that that is in a negative x direction, so that is actually negative 306. Okay, all right, so if we want to find the y, it's just as simple py is equal to p times sine theta. Alright, so that means that py is going to be equal to 400 pounds times sine of 40 degrees. Oops. So when I plug that in, 400 times 40, we get 257. So PY is going to be equal to 257 pounds. Alright? And that was in a positive direction. That didn't work for me. I'm trying to make everything bigger. All right, well, let's move on to the next problem. Okay, now this one is just a little different. Okay, and we can choose to write our origin anywhere we want. So, guys, we want to really put our origin here. 
and this will be our x-axis and this will be our y-axis. So we want to know then what is the x component of our force and what is the y component of our force. If I look at this based on how I've drawn my origin in on the system now, my x is positive and my y is negative. Alright, so let's look at it. If that angle is 30, okay, that means that this angle, just like that angle, is 60. Alright, so let's mark that. Now let's try to write our expressions. Okay, remember we always measure our angle from the x direction. That keeps everything consistent. So fx is going to be equal to f times cosine theta. And that means fx is 600 newtons times cosine of 60 degrees. And when I plug in my formula in my calculator, I get 300 for the x component of my force. Don't forget your units. Alright, now I want to find my y and it's equal to f sine theta So Fy is going to be equal to 600 Newton times sine 60 degrees. And I get Fy is equal to 520 Newtons. Okay, so let's double check now just to be sure that I do, when I use those numbers, I can get back to the 600 Newtons. So if I do R squared is equal to Fx squared. That's equal to 300 squared plus 520. Oops, you have to change back to not being a superscript. So R is equal to the square root of that, and I get 600 newtons, so that's good. Alright, oh, I did it again guys, I forgot to 
make my y be negative, I should have written right here that it was negative. So this is negative, okay? Let's not be sloppy and not lose that. Okay, negative. Very important. Alright? Now, moving on. Oh, an inclined plane. You're going to love that. Alright, when we are looking at an inclined plane, the angle of the plane is the same as the angle between the arbitrary x and y axis we're going to draw like this, where the x axis is going to be parallel to the plane, to the inclined plane, and so the y-axis has to be perpendicular to that. All right, so then there's a, a force that is the weight acting straight down. The angle of the inclined plane, okay, is the same as the angle between the force and the y-axis. All right, so first, let's look at what is the angle theta x, it's 70, we get that by doing 90 minus 20, okay, this is a 90 degree angle minus 20, All right, remember we always use our angle from the x axis and we want to know wx and wy, <coughs> so wx is equal to w times cosine theta which is going to be equal to <coughs> 50 pounds times cosine 70 degrees So that, when I plug into my calculator, is equal to 17.1 pounds. And WY is going to be equal to W times sine theta. WY is equal to 50 times sine of <coughs> 70 degrees, so WY is going to be equal to 47 pounds. Alright, um, again guys, I have failed to keep track of my signs. You got, we have to be careful about that. We don't want to be sloppy. These are negative numbers. They act in the negative x direction and in the negative y direction. So please don't forget that. Okay. Now, so we're moving along. Everything may seem to be a little repetitive to you, but we're just trying to stick to um, our series of events. I'm going to write a couple of reminders, type a couple of reminders for you here now. Uh, we always want to use the angle between the force and the x And then always remember to keep track of negatives. And so if we do that, these are the formulas that we're using basically. Okay? We can use R is equal to the fx squared plus fy squared square root of that so I'm just going to 
about that 0.5 for ease of what we're doing here. Fx is equal to F cosine theta. Fy is equal to F sine theta. And the tangent of theta is going to be equal to R F Y divided by F X. Right? So remember these things are all super important and this is basically the entire basis of what we're doing. Right? Okay, now here's one that tricks a little different. I know the force P they did not give me the angle that they want me to break it into components. But this triangle means something special. They're telling us that the ratio of the rise and the run. So from that we can get the angle. Right? So we do that by saying if I was trying to find the tangent of this tiny little angle here Okay, it's the same as, that angle is going to be the same as this one here, because this means this little triangle is the ratio of the rise and the run here. Alright, so we do that by saying the tangent the theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. Okay, so that means it's going to be equal to the opposite's one, the adjacent's two. Okay, so then we have theta is equal to when I plug that into my calculator, I get 26.6 degrees. Alright, now if I want to do Px and Py, I use my regular equations. that in my calculator. Right, I get twenty two point four pounds. And then PY, use the same formula we talked about before. Oops. I get 11.2. Okay, 
let's look here. Same kind of deal now. I've got the ratio. I don't know the angle. Right? So I want to know this angle. It's the same as this little angle. Okay? So I'm going to use the tangent of theta is equal to, oops, the offset over the adjacent, which is 5 is the offset, and 12 is the adjacent. Stretch this out a little bit. Okay. So theta is the arctan of divided by 12, which is going to be equal to 22.6 degrees. Which means Px is equal to 950p newtons times the cosine of 22.6 degrees. So Px is equal to 77 newtons and PY is 950 times the sine of 22.6 degrees and that gives us a PY of 365 newtons. Alright, last one. This one's just a little different. Um, it's still an inclined plane. We made the axes um, parallel to the surface of the plane. The y-axis is perpendicular, but now the plane's going in the other direction. So the angle 5 is the same as this little angle, okay? Which means that the other piece of that is 85. All right. The other trick here is this part. It says it's a 400 kilogram block. Don't miss that. Kilogram is a unit of mass, not a unit of force. Weight is a force. So to get the weight, we have to do the weight is equal to the 400 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared so the weight works out to be 3920 that would be newtons right? and WX becomes 3,920 newtons times the cosine of 85 degrees and Wx is equal to 342 newtons. The Y is acting in a negative direction, so don't forget that. 3,920 times the sine 
of 85 degrees. So WY. is equal to negative 3,905 newtons. Right? So don't forget to leave that one negative because it's acting in a downward force. All right? Okay, well, that concludes that. So if um, you've done that, you're ready to work problems in the book independently um, and do those homeworks. All right? Enjoy!